It powers the communication behind the app economy. Can this Silicon Valley enterprise connect you to the companies you need while keeping your data secure? Let's talk Twilio. Here's a phenomenal software company that helps app developers create and manage reliable communications processes via the cloud. In plain English, the platform is used by pretty much any app that sends you text messages. Think Uber, Airbnb, Twitter, Yelp, Netflix, many others. Now, it's been a wild trader. I think it's finally settled down to a level that's very attractive. So let's take a closer look with Jeff Lawson. He's the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Twilio. Get a better sense of how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Lawson, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you very much, Jim. All right, Jeff, I gotta tell you, it's been, when I say wild, there's been a roller coaster. But the one thing that I just quoted from a JMP piece of research after a quarter that I just struck me is unlike most companies, it said their biggest problem is how to manage the sea of inbound leads. How can I jive the craziness of the stock with the fact that that's about as strong a demand as you can get? Yeah, well, I can speak to the to the company on okay. stock price. But the uh, company, we are really focused on developers first. Our model is to get all the developers of the world onto Twilio right. and then bring us into the companies they work for when they need to solve communications problems. And so it's a really sort of high-velocity, almost consumer-like funnel of getting developers to discover Twilio, put it in their tool belt, so that then one day at work, when they have a problem they need to solve, they pull Twilio out and we're brought into that company. Okay, so why does Travis Kalanick say, I sleep easier, my engineers sleep easier because they use Twilio? Well, because they trust us with their communications. We allow drivers and riders to communicate with each other via the app in a secure and anonymous way. So that if you call the driver from inside the app, you're not giving the driver your personal phone number. Okay, now, if Twitter didn't have Twilio, what would Twitter be? If Twitter... If, if Uber? If they didn't have, no, I'm sorry, if Uber didn't have Twitter, sorry. If Uber didn't have Twitter, I mean, you would just be directly. You, yeah, in, in fact, when they first launched Uber, that's what right. it was. You would call the driver, but there's always concerns like, who am I giving my phone number to? Right. And that layer of security is a really important one. Okay, but how about the, the, what you're doing for Nordstrom, which you're trying to get, there's a customer service company that's kind of been left behind because they haven't been able to do customer service, but you have allowed them to get more in touch with the customer. Yeah, absolutely. What they wanted is for customers to be able to text with their associates and be able to talk to the salespeople to get product recommendations, find out when products come into stock. But again, a similar thing, right? You don't want to give your phone number to right. any salesperson. Right. And, you know, and Nordstrom wants to make sure it's integrated with their CRM so they can keep track of everything. And so they use Twilio to build this app that allows their salespeople from a mobile phone uh, to be able to see their customers and without revealing the personal details, the personal right. phone number of all of their customers, be able to text and have this great experience having a personal one-to-one -one connection right. with their customers. Okay, now, what, what are you Doing, is it similar with Home Depot? Are you doing the same thing with them? Uh, Home Depot has got a variety of use cases okay. uh, about uh, connecting shoppers with information about what's uh, going on in the store, you know, where the, the stuff is in the aisles and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so is this what might let us possibly over the stuff? I think that the company's got all these great customers, but you happen to have an unbelievable customer in WhatsApp. It's just a fantastic customer. And the short sellers who I, I tell me, why do you like this company? Don't you realize that WhatsApp could wake up tomorrow and do exactly what Twilio is and it can cut them out? This is a dangerous stock. Why is that? Are you that easy to cut out? Well, we are deeply embedded in our customers' applications, right? So their code, uh, they take and write against our APIs, and we get deeply embedded in our customers' applications. But WhatsApp is what we call a variable customer. They're different than almost all of our customer okay. base. The variable customers, eight of our customers, uh, whose usage can flux up and can flux down. And that's why we break them out, and we show that to the street so that uh, y'all can, uh, can, can see that as different from the rest of our customer base. Okay, but the idea is, is that any customer at any different given time can develop their own. I mean, I'm sure it may just not be advantageous for them to develop their own. It's better to stay, it's probably cheaper to stay with you. Yeah, well, I mean, all of our customers get the benefit of the rest of our customer base and the scale that they all bring. So when Twilio gets better, because we're investing in more APIs, more resiliency, more security, we just got our ISO 27001 last month, uh, as well as the scale of our super network, the number of interconnections that we have around the world, the mm -hmm. carriers of the world, hundreds of interconnections, and a routing layer that gets better every day with the feedback we get from our entire customer base, right. all of our customers benefit from that. And that's why going with Twilio makes a ton of sense in customers like Salesforce or Amazon Web Services are customers of ours. Okay, now before I let you go, I, apparently you might have a question for me? I do have a question for okay. you. Okay. You know, developers are building amazing things with Twilio, but it's actually really easy to write code and do amazing things. No, you Would can't write you... code unless you went to Stanford. <laughs> Jim, do you want to learn to write some code and build a Twilio app? Uh, I would love to write. I would love to learn how to write code. I would love it. 
Next time I'm here, why don't we do that on the Okay, air? absolutely, because I feel completely illiterate when I come out here. I mean, write code to me is, you know, like a dot, dot, dash. So I would love <laughs> to learn, and I thank you. And I think your stock has finally settled down to be equal to the excitement and the, I think, the great revenue trajectory of Twilio. Okay, that's Jeff Lawson, founder and chairman and CEO of Twilio. Do your homework. Understand, though, that many of the things that you use are powered by their communications. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.